Hello and welcome back to the MC Championship video. We were blessed with the non-canon MCC Pride 22 teams this week, so let's discuss each team, analyze their strengths and weaknesses, and try to rank each one from first to last. And I say try because damn, they're still balanced. All thanks go to Scott's Major for these insane teams. A quick disclaimer, my discussion of each team is based purely on facts and statistics from past events, nothing will be made up, and as for my ranking, it's all opinion based while remaining unbiased. So please, if you have something to say about these teams, then go ahead and join me down below in the comments. Share your thoughts on the MCC Pride 22 teams. Don't tell me I'm wrong because once again, it's my opinion, and yeah, I'm most definitely wrong with all of my placements because although these teams aren't as balanced as teams from the canon events, there are still so many possible combinations for where to put each team. Plus we don't know the game order or what games will be in this event and the coin multiplier therefore makes it impossible for me to get every single placement correct but in previous videos I managed to get just a couple right. With that out of the way let's look at our MCC Pride 22 teams. In last place but by no means the worst team, the Green Geckos with Valkyrie, Tina Kitten, Saikuno and Laserbeam. Note that this team originally had Ludwig on it but he was replaced almost straight away with Tina Kitten. Clearly this team is not very experienced in Minecraft, their main games tend to be a among us, perhaps even Fortnite, but in terms of experience within MCC itself, we saw Tina's debut last month in MCC 22 with a 39th place finish, and in Pride 21 last June, we saw Laser Beam's first event with 31st individual. But both Valkyrie and Saikuno are very new to the event, and it's fair to say that they are not too frequent with Minecraft in general, so perhaps mechanically this team will struggle, but of course that doesn't make them a bad POV to watch. Next up in 9th, we have the Blue Bats with Crytek Zeus, Big Seller, Dr. Gluon, and James Turner, the classic Sapphire Simmer squad, and perhaps they're in a better position than ever before, with Crytek Zeus actually recently winning MCC 21 where he finished 15th individual, a strong improvement from his MCC 17 standing of 25th. In both those events, he made it into dodgeball too. Vixella was also with Zeus on the MCC 17 Pink Pirates alongside the famous Fruit Ninja duo, where she finished 29th place. But excluding these two events, all four Simmers have always been teamed together and they've always come last place together, except for their 9th team finish in MCC 10 with the viewer teams. I think this team will perform much better than they have done in the past, exceeding their total multiplied points compared to their previous team ups in MCC 16 and 19, for example. Now we have the Lime Llamas with Kratzy, Spifey, Ponk and Eret. Despite this being a team of players who have all played before in canon events, for season 2 they're not statistically in a good position to win for this event, but anything can happen. Obviously the team captain will be Dave Kratzy, who has had some extremely mixed events throughout the entire season, from 5th in MCC 14 to 19th in his most recent event in MCC 21. He remains to be one of the strongest PvP players in this event, although the rest of his teammates are certainly lacking in this area. Eret's two canon events for 2022 have been rough, his teams finished last in both of them, and he achieved 38th and 40th individual placements for MCC's 20 and 22 respectively. Ponk is a more recent addition to MCC, having only played in 4 events, hovering around the 26th to 30th place range for individual standings, and teamed with Dave in MCC 20. And Spifey, who although has barely played in Season 2, just came from 30th place in MCC 22. So despite low performances across the team these past few months, each player here has something to contribute to improving the team's overall scores for the games. For example, Kratzy's pop-off battle box performances in Eret's comms during Gridrunners. Moving on to 7th place, which will be the Purple Pandas, with Jojo Solis, Kara Corvus, Kevin Puffy, and Nia Chu. Another all-female team following on from the MCC MCC 22 Yellow Yaks, which also had Jojo solos. Jojo came from solid non-canon performances in 2021 to insane top 10 placements in both her canon events so far, especially her third place individual last event. She's also familiar with everyone else in this team, having already VOD reviewed with Kara Corvus, who has had a very unlucky set of events this season, always placing bottom 10, with her strength lying in team games. Similarly, Nia Chu has also only ever finished bottom 10 in season 2, still as one of the weakest MCC players of all time. But there has been some progress as she works to improve her PvP capabilities on the training server occasionally. Captain Puffy's had more positive events recently me, and while she can sometimes be found in the same range as Ponk as described earlier, the notable 12th place finish in last year's Pride 21 should be remembered. Almost at the halfway point now, 6th place are the Cyan Coyotes, 5up, Tubbo, Vigumio and AMC. Very cool to see 5up and Tubbo team again after their incredible time on the MCC 21 Blue Bats where the team finished first place. But while 5up was then benched the next event, Tubbo dropped from 11th in MCC 21 to 26th in MCC 22. However, Tubbo maintains his position as the leading combat player on this team, with 5up possessing the game strats and VOD reviews, which will help this team navigate the meltdown game for for example, especially since only Tubbo has played it. Gumio returns after missing the last event too, and despite their unexpected 15th place in MCC 19, they finish bottom 10 in all other events. But that doesn't mean we should forget MCC 19, of course. The new player, AMZ, actually already participated in another non canon event, MCC Rising, where they finished 32nd. With a determined effort from 5up, as always, to prepare in advance of the event, this team is in a good position to finish higher than 6th. Here we go, moving into the top 5 teams for this event, starting with the Yellow Yaks, with Smajor Green, Shovel, and Gemini Tay. As you can already predict, the team games are huge for this team. In fact, according to statistics, their chances of dodgeball are almost impossible if none of the team games are picked, so they really need build mart, Santa time, and grid runners. There's a lot of chemistry built into this team, the iconic Smajor plus Shubbo duo returning after MCC 17, the Green plus Gem duo from the last place team of MCC 18, and the very new Shubbo plus Gem duo from last event's Purple Pandas. Between this team, PvP will be a real issue, especially as there is a lack of mechanical ability, as well as no clear team leaders for such games. Perhaps Smajor or Green as leaders, but they have limited experience of leading outside of build mart. Fortunately, they are statistically decent at movement, as 
one of the stronger hole in the wall teams this event. Here's an interesting one to watch out for the Pink Parrots with Sapnap, Rangu, Jack, Septikai, and Crank Gameplays. The PvP powerhouse of Season 2, Sapnap, is here with some of the highest averages in the event for combat games, and I'm looking at survival games in Sky Battle, but Battle Box is also good for him. Conversely, Rangu is an active hater of survival games for the obvious reason that he has sometimes pushed his team out of dodgeball near the end, but his strong point lies in build mod and hole in the wall. And then we have two newcomers, Jack, Septikai, and Crank Gameplays. While both do not specialize in Minecraft, instead they tend to be variety content creators. They certainly aren't new to its many mechanics, and with two proven leaders in Sapnap and Ranbu, I'm sure their first event will help them clear the obstacles that come with joining the event for the first time, such as understanding the rules of complex games such as Sands of Time. The third place team, who unfortunately barely missed dodgeball for this list, are the Aqua Axolotls Tapel, Anfrost, Gizzy Gazza, and Red Velvet Cake. I must say, this scary PvP duo of Tapel and Anfrost must terrify some of the other teams. We've seen Tapel go crazy in Pride 21, where he finished second individually, and his main pop-up moment was Sky Battle. Anfrost had his worst performing event in MCC 21, but that was still a solid 16th place. And like Fiverr, he's an avid void reviewer and his depth of MCC knowledge should help the newcomer here, Red Velvet Cake, who isn't new to Minecraft tournaments at all. Indeed, they have played in past Twitch Rivals events before. Gizzy Gaza famously won Pride 21, so I'm sure he's looking for the back-to-back -back Pride wins, and will fit into this team perfectly while also having teamed with Tapal and MCC 18. Here are the top two teams that could very well enter dodgeball, although in actuality any of the 10 teams could make into the finale, this is just my gut instinct. Our runner-up team are the Orange Ospots with Illumina in the Little Woods, Nifrish and Elena EXE. We have Illumina, who is mechanically well-versed as one of the exclusive S tiers in the event, and who also won Pride 21. He's back within the Little Wood after their team up on the underrated MCC 15 Purple Pandas. Martin isn't competitive at all, but still manages placements that are above average, and shares similar strengths to Illumina in movement games, particularly Ace Race, Hole in the Wall, and Rocket Speed Rush. Elena has only played twice this year, and in both events they finished bottom 10 individually, however their second event was with Illumina. Sniffrush has also only played twice, winning their first event in MCC 21, but then dropping to 38 individual the event after, which is also coincidentally the same placement Elena achieved in MCC 21. Movement games are absolutely the priority for the team. And in first place, although I don't expect a huge lead from them, the Red Rabbits, with Dream, George on Found, Carl Jacobs, and Foolish Gamers. Feels a little similar to the MCC 22 Red Rabbits, perhaps because Dream and George are teamed together again, achieving individual placements must have been a first and eighth respectively, with their team in dodgeball and barely losing it. The rest of the team is also Dream SP content creators, Carl teaming with Dream and George each twice, but is not a regular player, having only ever played three times and winning his first event in MCC 11. Foolish had his debut just last event with 27th individual, and for his first time that's not bad at all, but his training arc leading up to and even after that event showed his dedication to practice and improve. What separates this team from the Orange Oslots is that they will play to win. Meanwhile, they're also well above average for most PvP and movement games too. I think the thing to take away from this is that rankings are starting to become more unpredictable, even though team bouncing isn't as important for this non-canon event. You know, looking at my own ranking, I still feel unsure about how low I place the Yellow Yaks. Maybe they should be a couple places higher, but at what expense? If I move a team up a few spots, who should I move down? See, even as I'm recording this, I haven't made up my full mind, and that's okay. Remember, these are just initial thoughts, and they will undoubtedly change as I see which teams are putting in the most pre-event practice, and which games will be announced, and for which teams they'll benefit the most. I might post my final predictions right before the event starts in the comments below, so go join me there to discuss these epic teams. Well, I've been your host, I hope you found this video informative and enjoyable, and I'll catch you on the next MCC video. See ya!